Hello again and welcome to our hour of sporting chat on a Thursday night, Sheffield Live TV. We must be doing something right because both of our guests this evening have been here before. So I'm indebted uh, for return visits to Tony Minicillo and to Jim Phipps, who don't really need an introduction, but they'll get one from me. Anyway, athletics. Is there anything really to talk about in athletics at the moment, Tony? I'm not quite sure. <laughs> we will debate uh, some of the headlines and we'll talk about uh, the latest progress of Sheffield's golden girl, uh, Jessica Ennis-Hill, because, of course, uh, Tony here has coached her through these great successes that she's had. And we look forward to great successes as well for Sheffield United Football Club. Indeed, both our football clubs, it just so happens, we seem to have quite a blades spin on things at the minute. Uh, Tony reminds me he's a Sheffield United fan, so he's going to give our other guest a bit of a kicking as well as me, it looks like tonight. <laughs> <laughs> that's as good. That's, oh, that's, as, that's, as <laughs> that's as warm a welcome, Jim, as I can manage. And you always take it smiling. It's good to see you, co-chairman of Sheffield United Football Club, return visit. Goodness knows how I managed to persuade you to come in this time, but you have. Well, so. I'm, I'm glad to be here. It's so. good. There are one or two questions. You won't be surprised. One or two from me, and I've had a succession of tweets throughout the day, as you, you can appreciate. Yep. So we'll raise everything. Fantastic. Uh, but Tony, I've got to start with how refreshing it was a couple of days ago when we were all talking about world athletics and politics and Russia to see a tweet from you saying effectively, uh, Jess Ennis Hill, business as usual, out training. Yeah, what else can you do? What else can you do? I mean, I did, I did go into training on, on, on the morning and I just said, should we just pass and go off to Costa? Because athletics might be withdrawn completely from Rio. That's a possible outcome. He says, well, what do you think? I said, mm, no, we'll carry on. We'll let's see yeah. what happens. So, I mean, it was all done tongue in cheek. But no, they're difficult times for athletics. And the information that's coming out about Russia is, is one lump of information. That's only about really an investigation by WADA into the accusations from the German TV documentary. Mm. Nobody's followed up the Sunday Times. And you have Liam Diak, the ex-president of the IAAF, the International Athletics uh, Federation, who, who's been questioned by French authorities over uh, bribery and, and corruption charges. So he, he has a little bit more to come, I think. Yeah, this is the shocking thing, the allegations that he goes right to the top on the, mm. on the basis. For anybody who doesn't know, I mean, basically, uh, the anti-doping agency uh, report alleged corruption at the top of, mm. uh, of athletics, complicity to cover up uh, positive uh, drug testing. Did that shock you? It does actually that it goes up that high. Um, it, it's very sad, to be honest. We're quite depressed and, and quite, you know, you feel a bit violated. You trust, you put the trust in people. But I mean, FIFA football's gone through similar mm. sort of things. You think that, you know, that people that are in those positions of authority, they're doing the best for the game and the sport. The difference with FIFA is that you're talking about money in order to gain the World Cup. So, you, you know, potentially there's been bribery there, maybe alleged to, that in order to award a World Cup. On the athletic side, it's much worse because this is about potentially receiving money to allow people's positive drug tests not to come out, which then allowed them to, to compete. And by the looks, people have won medals. Mm. In 2012. Um, yeah, it, it's, it's very different from the football, to be honest, and, and it's worse than the football. But both situations are sad and tragic tragic Jim got to be you know that we cannot trust people in senior positions in sport there's greed it would seem at top level yeah I mean I don't think it goes to all senior people in sport uh, worldwide but certainly uh, we, we've all been let down and in a mm. significant way um, you know it turns out if it if if all turns out as uh, as the reports have come out that uh, you know that perhaps medals were awarded at the London Games, uh, that should have been that should have gone to others. Mm. Um, you know, mm. that, that's really a, that's really a setback. I know you've talked about the 2011 yeah. medal, but you know when, uh, of course, uh, Jessica's on a on a bit of a roll and she's she's bringing home golds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, regardless, but the yeah. um, congratulations on the most recent one. In, in Thank Michigan. you. But the, uh, you know, I think um, we shouldn't allow ourselves to uh, sort of overindulge our. Uh, you know, the despair that we feel about this particular situation. 
Um, I think that you know we'll probably find that on balance, the systems that surround international sport are have, have integrity, and this is a case of you know uh, national authorities and maybe one federation and and some individuals elsewhere uh, failing us, but not a you know I, I think you know we shouldn't take it as being a as a judgment on all senior uh, sports well, officials. We'll talk about the ram ramifications for athletes later. We'll talk about Lord Coe and what he has to do in, in, mm. in your opinion, how it affects Jess, how it affects morale in the sport a little bit later on. But Jim, it's it, it's not getting you off. <laughs> and I know you take that in the spirit of, in, in, intended. I think one of the things that, 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 that Sheffield United supporters, many of them would like me to acknowledge before we get into some tough questions, is that you're out there to be to be shot at. You're, you're there on Twitter. I don't know if you ever regret being being out there, but you 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 do get. A, let's just say, call it a cross section of opinion, don't you? Sure. You know, some of it is. Uh, uh, you know, I think most of it is well intended and the byproduct of, you know, real concern about you know how our club is doing. Uh, there are a few folks who um, are negative no matter what, you know, and those folks are it's a very, I think, a very small minority. Um, and I think, you know, our fans um, uh, have uh, every reason to uh, to be concerned. I mean, the the results, um, you know, are not, uh, you know, these are the real results so far this season, and they haven't been uh, according to our, uh, you know, our desire, um, or we believe, you know, to the efforts that have gone in. We just haven't. Uh, you know, we haven't got good enough performances or, or results, and that's you know. And sometimes we've gotten, you know, plenty of uh, chances and haven't been able to convert on them. And that's been, you know, it's produced some real yeah. angst amongst uh, Blades fans. Well, you're eighth in the table, uh, which is, you know, several positions, probably six below where you maybe expect yeah, to be. Yeah, not good enough. You're uh, eight you know, points we, off where you. But the table, be. the table doesn't lie. I, I really believe that, and I think we have uh, some work to do to improve our performances. We. And we've got, um, you know, we uh, we've we have to be, uh, we have to play with uh, with more passion. We've got to be more effective. Uh, I mean, I think you'll you'll want to address, uh, you know, what fans uh, feel about uh, about the playing staff, etc. But I, I, you know, just on the general question of of the fan engagement, um, I guess I'd rather be engaged than not engaged, mm. uh, and that comes with a certain amount of. Um, you know, uh, there'll be some who behave in ways that are over the top, but uh, you know, uh, by and large, our fans, you know, uh, are intelligent and have uh, and have something, yeah. uh, you know, real to say about what they're observing, and uh, and you know, we see it too. Um, Where you come from is of no relevance. You're American. You're accustomed to sport there, and of course, the thing that keeps coming up is how much do you really know about football? But, I, but from a technical point of view, you could also argue how much do you actually need to know? It's professional sport. Well, I think um, I think as, I'm, a, as a chairman, sure, sure, sure. I think I'm still inclined to um, not. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't pretend that I know more about football than anyone here. Um, I'll tell you what my approach is, and it's a, something that I learned as a child watching Ronald Reagan. The, the idea in leadership roles is not to try to do everything yourself and not to know everything yourself, but to get damn good people, mm -hmm. right? And so Have you damn good people? I think we've got, uh, uh, in Nigel Atkins, the best manager for this job that we could, that we could possibly imagine. I said when we uh, retained his services that he was the most single most qualified living human being to do this job, mm. and I, I still think that's exactly right. Okay, well, before we just pursue down that line, you're a football supporter, mm. you support the Blades, what's your view? Um, I think likewise, the eighth is not where I'd, I'd expect them to be, I'd expect them to be a little bit higher up, you know, but you're talking a couple of wins, but what are we, how many games have we played so far? But it's we've got been, about 30 left to go, right? Yeah, so it's about yeah. a third of the way into the season. You've got Nigel Atkins has been there Christ, not long at all. And, and the sad thing about football, and I'm coming from a coach's perspective, is, is unfortunately chairmen and boards don't give managers anywhere near the length of time to do anything. If you think that within 20 weeks you can make a, a real huge physiological change to a team, structure a team, find the right kind of players, judge it, and do that, then I'm sorry, you're sadly mistaken. It takes a long time. You, 
And I, I know you probably won't, but you'd want to give Nigel three years and mm. say, after three years, has your youth policy brought something through? Have we bought well? Have mm. we done that? Have we finished? Are, are we showing progression? That it, hasn't been Sheffield United's record. They've, they've hired and no, fired. It, and that, and uh, that, that creates no stability. I mean, I, I recently finished uh, Trevor Brookings' biography, and I'm reading uh, Alex Ferguson's. I've nearly finished the, the leading. And, and one of the things is it, it is the difficulty of pulling a squad together that understand each other. And you bring in a new player, the nuances of a nod and a wink, and when somebody runs, you know he's going to run and he's going to run quick. And I'll lay it that I'll mm. knock it into that space and that. And even. It, even you get players on teams, and I'm not saying this is the case at Sheffield United, who are happy to take the wages and not go on the field because they have very comfortable living. So again, the passion and how people play, that's going to take a manager time to put people in positions and stuff like that. You referred to three years and that, uh, that mm. you would like Nigel Atkins to stay. That's the length of his contract. That's right. Uh, cynics would say, well, Nigel Clough probably had a three-year contract and he lasted, what, 19 months? Which was, a dub which was a doubling, roughly, of our average over the preceding decade for how long? I read on Twitter that yeah. you said that you would now like to double that. So uh, does that mean that even if Sheffield United don't go up this season, that Nigel Adkins will be the manager next season? I, I, you know, I, th I think that's the, uh, that's the only logical conclusion. Assuming I think you we, don't go down. Heads up to head, sorry. Let's all go down. It's bad enough. Does Let's he really have anything, have anything to say in <laughs> this interview? <laughs> <laughs> uh, which, which, <laughs> was that Al or, or, uh, no, or Blade? No, 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 no. <laughs> You're getting more hassle from the guests than you are from the interrogator. <laughs> All right. I want, to, I want him to talk to me. Oh, now. okay. I'm here, Culper. I'll sit here quiet. Yeah, so, so, so the logical conclusion is Nigel Atkins is your manager for next season, even if you don't go up this We've time. got to build stability. One of the things that we're working on right now really hard in the club is uh, re-establishing something that, uh, you know, re-establishing the, the work of our technical board and um, getting... Uh, the right inputs so we don't uh, sort of recommit uh, some of the mistakes we made have, might have made along the way. That's, uh, that's good stuff. Um, and Nigel's a key to that. You know, and he's, actually, he's a willing participant in that effort, and he's been, uh, you know, we've got uh, top uh, front office management involved in that process, and then the recruiting and, and uh, academy staff are involved in that and, and leadership. And so we've I think got all the parts working, and you know what you said, Tony is is exactly right. Mm. You know, you, um, I, I can't even imagine what it's like to be a professional footballer just because you've got that constant uh, discussion out there about who needs to go out and who needs to come in, and this is your career. All these little adjustments that we make and the the rumors that surround them, they all have an effect on you yeah. know, and they get into the heads of the yeah. of the players. I'm sure that that's it's a difficult position to be in. But if you're going to make um, if you're going to make organizational changes, you you've got to do it in a way that produces stable uh, and sustainable uh, performance. Well, you've been around for two years and two months now yeah. uh, since the prince uh, invested. Yes, and I'm sure that you expected by now to be in the championship. At least, sure. Yeah, no, no doubt. And so, how frustrated is the prince becoming? I mean, I, has he been, has he been over here recently? The, 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 oh yeah, he stays. Up? He stays. Uh, he, you know, he keeps his ear to the ground. He he communicates. You know, his his views are very much uh, in the mix uh, on what needs to be done, what we're doing, what's being accomplished. Um, he does have a fourteen to eighteen hour a day job, so yep. you know, his his attention is is largely there. But uh, well, what's his mood at the moment? Uh, uh, quietly confident. Um, I think we we believe that uh, we've hit a bit of a of a rough patch, but that the fundamentals of what we've done so far, getting in the right uh, gaffer uh, for this campaign this season and for uh, beyond, getting uh, you know it's it's a it's a piece by piece work. You can't do it all at once. Anybody who's ever gone in to try to change any organization and any business knows that you you can't do it all in one big uh, in one big move. It takes. Mm -hmm. Uh, it takes building, and so we we're, we're I think uh, patient. Uh, you know, I've said before that the prince is a is a, is not a good loser. No, um, and and he's and he's not. Uh, he feels you know I think uh, he probably uh, some of uh, the way he feels about things probably tracks what some of the fans 
uh, say on on uh, on Twitter sometimes. Mm. But the but the because he's a passionate real football fan, and he and uh, you know he's a football man. And uh, and he has and he has real views about it. Can I not one issue on the head? Sorry to, yeah, to sure. interrupt. People say that he hasn't invested. Now I know that's not the case. Yeah. Did I read? Am I right? Did I read a figure banded around recently that he had put in thirty million pounds? Yeah. That's Is right. that correct? Thirty-one correct. million. I read. No, no, one three. And, one uh, three. And well, you know, I yeah. don't think there. We need to have a big discussion about that. I think that I, you know I've said what needs to be said on that. Mm. I think the. The, there's an investment, there's the magnifying effect of the investment uh, where we've been able to, uh, to, to uh, achieve other incomes that weren't anticipated. And I think the, uh, you know, overall, uh, the club has, has, the, uh, has had the financial support and resources it needs. And mm. you know, I think we're all, um, you know, like you said, we'd all like to be in the championship rather than League One. But right now, there are 23 other clubs in League One who feel the same, yeah. and we've got to earn our way out. We've got to play our way out on the pitch, and that's, yeah. uh, you know, that's that's the, what that's what needs doing. And so, 13 million pounds invested from the new investor, the Prince. Yeah. You'd have thought that would have gone a long way, maybe a lot further than it has done at this point. Uh, but we'll look ahead in the second part, second uh, part of the show, maybe to the January window, what's happening in terms of players going out on loan, the size of the squad, the size of the squad in bodies, but also the size of the squad in height, because the average height of a Sheffield United footballer is about five foot ten, I think. So maybe that. that you might have a, 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 a view on that, Tony. Um, I, 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 I mean, the number of people that said that Jessica Ennis was too small to ever succeed at athletics right. was, was really, it was huge. And I could see what people said, but you know what? The height of somebody doesn't say how big their heart is, how big their passion is, the other skills that they may have, the speed, the brain, the, the ability to make the decisions under pressure. So, mm. you know, if you're going to judge somebody on height, it, it's ridiculous. I, I mean... To be honest, I, I worked in football in the community uh, at Sheffield United with Tony Curry, and, and again, football reminds me, there's a scene in the film Moneyball where they're, they're sat around the table and they're re discussing how they're going to recruit baseball players. And they suggest that they're not going to recruit this particular player because his girlfriend's ugly. <laughs> and, and they sit there and they go, what do you mean? And he says, oh, ugly girlfriend means he's got no confidence, so we're not recruiting. And, it, and it's that same thing. Oh, he's got big feet, so he won't be good with the ball. He's got really small feet, he'll fall over a lot. He's this, he's yeah. that, he's the other. It, it, to me, it's superstition and myth. It, yeah. it, you know, do they play, do they do the job you want them to? That's it, regardless yeah. of height or the size of the pack. Yeah, that, you could say that, but it's a set-piece game in League One often, isn't it? Defending set-pieces, attacking them. Big players, you need big players. And it's a physical game. Sure. There's that one great pick of uh, Jessica between the two big. Uh, yeah. Uh, and, you know, which, which, if you could edit that pick, you'd edit in the gold medal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it's, but it's, so, even if you say it's set pieces, but it's how you play the set pieces. Are you going to play it on the floor? Are you going to throw it over the top? And you know what? Uh, Nigel Atkins is going to look and he's going to go, actually, am I going to toss this over the top as an aerial game if that's where we're weak? No, he's going he's to pick out. He wants to play. I know, he, I know yeah. he wants to play through the field or has, has done mm. so far. How is Jess? She's good. She's good. Yeah. Very good. Uh, progressing nicely. She injured herself in, in Beijing in the 800 metres, tore a calf. So we've had a really steady return. But in terms of physical shape in the gym, she's training completely. We, we've substituted running sessions for bike sessions. Um, and we're doing the technical work that we can do at, at lower levels. But it's all going so far. Is there any wood? <laughs> it's wood. <laughs> it's, it's, going, it's, back, going, it's going really well. So, no, I'm, I'm really happy. We are way ahead of where we were this time. According, to, according to Twitter, you could go right here. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good job you can smile. You really, really, it says a lot for you, Jim. I know you've got your critics out there, but you can sure. smile and you can take it, which is which is to, to your great credit. And also, there are very, at your level in football, there are very few people actually out there on on social media as you are. I found there is a reason. <laughs> you know what the reason is? Yeah, Jess. We look forward to the the Olympics and the challenge there. Just briefly before the break, I'm guessing that she's self motivated. Yeah, and, 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 and the motivation is a bit different now. I think this this second Olympic Games, it's 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 more for her son, for Reggie. That's what it's about. It's a different motivation, different cause. Yeah. Mm. James Craig will join us after the break. He rounds up all the other action, including uh, ice hockey and uh, rugby and our non-league football teams. And then we'll get into some more questions, including apparently a ground ex expansion plan at uh, Sheffield United. Is that right?
One what? or two people on Twitter tell me there is. Join us in five minutes after the break with these two. See you then.